Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse from the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Zeh Hayoyim Tchilos Masecha. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on the night of Erev Rosh Hashanah in the year Tavshin Membez, 43 years ago. The Rebbe went on to certify and edit this Chassidic discourse in honor of Rosh Hashanah for the year Tavshin Memtes, 36 years ago. So again, the Chassidic discourse is based on the on what it's, we recite in the prayers of Rosh Hashanah, based on what it says in the Talmud, Zehayoim Tchilas Masecha. This day is the beginning of all your actions. Zikaroin, a remembrance, Liyoim Rishoin for the first day. So the Rebbe brings from the the uh, the, the Rebbe that Samach Sadek, who is who is celebrating his birthday on Erev Rosh Hashanah. So he says, seemingly, there's a question from the beginning to the end. Why? What is Zehayoyim Tchilos Masecha? Which means today is the beginning. It's literally the beginning. In other words, that the Rosh Hashanah, the day of the creation of the uh, uh, world, is the beginning of the whole creation of the whole world, all the worlds. In other words, what happens then is that in Rosh Hashanah, Every single year, all the worlds that get recreated from new right now, just like in the beginning. But on the other hand, when it says Zikaroin, a remembrance to Leon Rishoin, so that's saying something totally different and the opposite. That today is a remembrance of, of the first day. And he explains that Rosh Hashanah, there's actually two components. There's the beginning of all creation, that's component number one. And it's also a remembrance of the first day. Now, since he starts off and says, Tchilas Masecha first, and then we add, it's also the currently and Rishon. So obviously, when he says the currently and Rishon, it's something on a higher level than the level of Tchilas Masecha. Joseph will understand this based on the introduction. Um, but we say in reference to the day of Rosh Hashanah, Zeh Yoin Tchilas Masecha. This is the day, the beginning of all of creation. We know the question is asked, the fact is, the world is created on the 25th day of Elul. And Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of creation. It's the day when mankind was created. And that's the end of creation, technically. But nevertheless, what do we say? Tchilas Masechah, it's the beginning of the creation. What does that mean? The Rebbe explains that the explanation is because the ultimate purpose of the creation of the world, why did Hashem create the world, is that it should be the revelation of godliness. So if you ask, why did Hashem create the world, what's the purpose of creating the, of the world, so God should be revealed. Up until the point <coughs> that every single detail of the creation should reveal the honor of Hashem. Like Chazal tell us at the end of Masech the Zavot, that it says as follows. I'll say it in Hebrew and I'll translate. Kol ma shebara kodesh baruch hu Everything that Hashem created in this world, like baroi el lechvoidi, He only created it in His honor. And this revelation, this revelation, how does, how does the honor of God get revealed in the world? It gets revealed through the work of human beings. And therefore we say on the day of Rosh Hashanah, today Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of creation, because this idea that, the, that God should be revealed in the world, and that's the intent of the whole creation, when did that start? That started when man was created on the sixth day of creation, on the day of, of Rosh Hashanah. In other words, besides the fact that on that day, there came the possibility that God should be revealed, but actually it happened on that day. Like Chazal tell us that the first man, Adam Arishna, was created. On the day he was created, he announced to everything, all the creations of the world, Boyu let's go ahead and let's go prostrate ourselves and let's bless the creator of the world, God that created us. And everyone responded and said, Hashem Malach Geus Lovich. You can say that this that we say, Zehayoin Tchilas Masecha, even though Rosh Hashanah is seemingly only the beginning of the intent of the creation, 
Because what does is, what is mass, mass action mean? It refers to completion. And just like in a human being, the, cre- the completion is when something comes in reality. The same thing on a spiritual level. And, how, and, and, and on the contrary, that's why, that's why it, it's in this world, in the, by us, because we know that we're compared to our Shaman Hai. That <coughs> the completion of all the creation is an action, and that's why he says, Zehayoyim, this is the day, the beginning of the creation. Because what, is, what, is, what does action mean? It has to be complete. So the day, day of Rosh Hashanah is the day that Hashem created mankind. That's the beginning of the completion of the creation of the world. You can say, this is also the reason why <coughs> that Rosh Hashanah is called, in continuation of Tchilas Masacha, it's called Zehayoyim. He uses two expressions, ze. This and Hayoyim day. Why? Because Ze and Hayoyim, this double expression of Ze Hayoyim is referring to a complete revelation. Why? Because Ze is referring to revelation. It's reveal Ze. This is, you're revealing it. Like if you take your finger and you say Ze, this is it. And Yoyim day is also revelation. Like it says, Vayikra Lakim, God called the Ur to light Yoyim day. And Ze Hayoyim is two levels of revelation. And that's the ultimate revelation. And that's why it says, Zehayoyim Tchilas Masecha, which means that this, that Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of, 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 of your actions, which means it's the beginning of the completion of the creation, because then on that day you had the, the beginning of the revelation that through the fact that mankind will do his work, God will be reveal, revealed, and that's the whole idea of what? Of Zehayoyim, this is the day, the revelation. Rebbe goes on to say, to explain this idea, that Rosh Hashanah is a day that mankind was created, and that's called the beginning of creation on a deeper level. He says we know that the, the human beings have the power to change the past as well. Not only the present, not only the future, but we can change the past. So therefore, how much more so? When it comes to the work, of mankind, which we know that's the ultimate creation Hashem created, that the 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 the, the power and the impact that that the Adam created and everything that, that Hashem created in the world when he came along and we quoted before and he announced, Boyu let's go ahead and prostrate ourselves in front of Hashem. It's also referring to everything of before of be, uh, before he said it. Why? Because since the whole intent of the creation was that mankind should come and do its work and reveal godliness in the, in the world, so therefore after godliness got revealed in the world, it actually elevated the physical world of before as well. And especially that it's all preparation, um, uh, was all preparation for the revelation that was going to come afterwards. And that's, that's why um, uh, the, the day of Rosh Hashanah, which is, means a day that Hashem created mankind, that's the, beginning of every, that's the beginning of everything. And the literal meaning is, and we know that you can't take the, the, something out of its literal meaning. You can have beautiful commentaries and insights, but the literal meaning is that the beginning of all the cr- actions and the creations, and even everything that was created in the five days before um, in time, because when a person does your, their, their, their work of elevating and creating something new in the world, and that's why it's considered the beginning of creation, the beginning of all creation, because we are we, the, because Adam went ahead and revealed God in the world. And just like when it came to Rosh Hashanah in the first time, when God created mankind, so that was the completion of the world, Masecha, and in a way that it was, it was, it was in a renewed way, Tchilas Masecha. The same thing also, not only in the past, but every single Rosh Hashanah, every, every single year, when the Jewish people crown Hashem, <coughs> that Hashem should be our king over us, and over us and over the whole world, that creates the completion and the newness of the whole creation. And through that, you have the completion on high as well, like the, the, the teaching of the Maggot of Mezrich, and the Alter Rebbe, based on what it says in the Mishnah, Da ma lamayla mimcha, which literally means know it's above you. But the they translate it is know that everything that exists on high, mimcha, everything comes from you. We have the power to create great things down here and even on high. So therefore, 
after he says, this is the beginning of creation, he adds the Kara in a remembrance to the first day. Because this idea of remembering the first day we're going to learn now is a higher level of Tchilos Masech. Until now we learned the beginning that we, we, we reveal God in the world. And now we're going to learn the Karim Lariyam Risha is even a higher level. Why is the house at a higher level? And he explains. Because Tchilos Masech, what does that mean? It's the completion and the revolutionary idea of the creation that happens through the work of mankind. Now, this um, drawing down the powerful en- energy, it ca- so in Kabbalistic terms, it's called Isarus de Lotata. When we do our work, when we put in our effort, so we, re- we bring down very high levels. But what can we bring down? Only a place that the Isarus de Lotata, our work, can reach. But in, it's that, it's Masecha. We do our work, it's just Lotata, we bring down what we can reach. However, the idea of Yoim Rishain, who, like, so he brings from the teaching from the Tzamech Tzedek, in that Tzedek discourse, that on that, um, Yoim Rishain, it wasn't from what we reached it, but that came from Hashem himself. Because there was no one there to awaken the, the energy should come down. Like it says clearly in the Torah, of Adam Ayin, there was no one there. In other words, there, not only there wasn't a resusal attack, there wasn't someone to do the work, but it wasn't even possible because there was no one there. So, so why did Hashem create the world if no one was inspiring God to do it? Because that came from a place, from this is called, from the chesed of Hashem, from the kindness of Hashem himself. Like we know it says, ki chafes chesed to Hashem desires to do kindness. In other words, besides the point that today, what? How do? How does the energy come down? It comes through our work, Isarustalatata, which means there's judgment and 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 and, and uh, laws, etc. But then, from the first day, it came from Chesed, and like we said, you no, know, it says Oilam Chesed Yibana. Hashem created a world out of Chesed. Now, this level of Chesed, the first day, is higher than the Chesed that which comes from the Midois. Um, and even from its source, the way it's in intellect, because basically this level is chesed is um, it's not regular chesed. It's coming from a place like we said before, chafetz chesed, a desire for chesed. Chafetz comes from the word of tainug, which we know tainug is in the, in, the, in the spirit of keser. It's the higher one. But what is the what was the desire? The desire was it should be chesed, and be through chesed there, should, there became a world that was that was built, and, um, and and that created the world that we have. So you can say that the, 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 the internal reason that the first day of creation is called Yoim Rishon, the first day, because the revelation of Chafetz Chesed that was shining on that day is what? Ur, light and revelation. Because we know day is considered light and revelation, and that's the, the, sor- the source and the, and, the, and the cause for bringing down chesed that from there was created the, all the worlds. And that's why it says, Because in every Rosh Hashanah, that we, when we mention the way the world was created on the first day, what was on the first day? There was a revelation of chafetz chesed, not just regular chesed, not just regular kinds, but chafetz chesed. And we, by mentioning it, we're actually drawing down from chafetz chesed. So this idea that Rosh Hashanah is a zikar in Liyam Yishrein, it's higher than Tchilas Masecha. Why? Because Tchilas Masecha, that's us doing our part, Yisus Lotata brings down great blessings. But Yom Rishon, which means, again, he explains, Yom Rishon is not just the first day. It's revealing the Chafetz Chesed, the desire for Chesed. That's the light and the revelation of the, of the, of the source and the reason of all the creations, the higher level and the lower level. And, and obviously, it's, this, this idea of Chafetz Chesed is even higher than what? Higher and lower. This that the Jewish people, through our work, that we mention the way the world was created in the beginning, Yom Rishon, Chum Chafetz Chesed, so we're able to draw down this powerful revelation, so it reaches the level of Chafetz Chesed on its own, and the place where we cannot reach it. Because how do we reach there? Because the Jewish people, we actually reach a place higher than Chafetz Chesed. And like we know, that the, the, when Hashem decided to create the world, so it says, What was Hashem consulting? He should create the world. It says He was consulting with the souls of the, of the righteous people. And the fact is, that when we say tzaddikim, everyone's a tzaddik. Because it says, 
So this to Hashem, so to speak, <coughs> Hashem was inspired but because Chafetz Chesed, he has desire to do good. Why, 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 why did he desire to do it? Because he obviously had an elevation in his thought, and it was an internal thought, which is higher than the revelation of Chafetz Chesed, that in the future what's going to happen is the Jewish people are going to come and they're going to learn Torah and they're going to do mitzvot and they're going to make a dwelling place for Hashem down there. So therefore when we do our work, what gets what, what, what gets drawn down what is the revelation of Chafetz Chesed. So from here we understand that the revelation of Chafetz Chesed that gets, that gets drawn down now through our work is even higher than the level of Chafetz Chesed that was in the beginning of creation. Why? Because when we do our work and we put in our efforts, what happens, Hashem gets uh, tremendous satisfaction. Like it says, Nachas Ruach Lefonai, Hashem gets tremendous satisfaction. Shamarti, I said to do this, I'm an Aser people are doing what I want. And this powerful satisfaction, and this powerful pleasure, Nachas Ruach and Tainug, that we're doing Hashem's work, it reaches the essence of Hashem. Nachas Ruach Lefonai. Lefonai means the premium, the most internal part of Hashem, which is higher than the level of the pleasure of Chafetz Chesed. And through the fact that the, the Chafetz Chesed gets revealed, so get, what happens, it gets awakened that through our work, so we literally draw down the, the Nachas Ruach, the, the intense desire and the pleasure of Nasser Itzoyni. And this is also the internal reason why that um, before we say on Rosh Hashanah, Zikaren Liyayim Rishayin, so we say first, Chilas Masecha. Why? Because Zikaren Liyayim Rishayin, which comes after Chilas Masecha, which means drawing down Chafetz Chesed, is much higher than its on its own been in the beginning of the creation. Now, so let's recap before we go forward. What Rebbe is saying is like this. There's Tchilas Masecha, there's the part that we do our work, Isrus Lotata, and that brings down from what we can reach. There's Yoim Rishon, which is a higher level, Chafetz Chesed, Hashem decided to create the world. But then by us mentioning it, by us doing our part, so we reach a place deeper than the regular Chafetz Chesed. Much deeper, which that happens only after Hashem created the world. And that's why the first thing we say is Tchilas Masecha. Because through our avoido, the the, the currently and Rishon is actually a much, much deeper, much powerful place. Now, even though that the revelation of Chafetz Chesed that was there in the beginning, and the source of drawing it down comes from the essence, the pleasure that Hashem has in the uh, the, the work of the Jewish people, and that why did Hashem wake in also Chafetz Chesed? Because He saw in the future our work, but nevertheless, when we actually do it. In actuality, so that actually adds in, into the pleasure. And like we see, that in order to, to, to fulfill the uh, intent and the dream and the desire that God had to make a dwelling place down to this world, Hashem had to create the world. And literally a physical world, I mean a world of concealment. And then Hashem had to go ahead and give us a Torah. And only after he created the world and he gave us a Torah, that's when we have the uh, the, the 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 commitment of the of, of the the existence of the world, like like it says clearly, Eretz Yara Veshak the 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 earth was in awe and trepidation, but then we go ahead and do our spiritual work, which basically happens after Matan Torah, literally. Which means, what does it mean? We go ahead and we learn Torah. And as we know that this, that Torah is 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 great because it brings to all the actions, and then we do the mitzvah. It's literally we physically we do all the mitzvahs, and um, even though Hashem knew in His knowledge and His thought that it's going to happen, and that that knowledge and vision caused Hashem to create the world of Chafiz Chasidu. But the fact is, the the thought and the knowledge is thought which is in the essence of Hashem, which is above revelation and um even th that from this thought awaken hashem the chafetz chesed the chafetz chesed which 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 ultimately created the world but nevertheless this thought remained in the essence of hashem and didn't come it didn't come down fully and um it's uh, when did it come down fully it came down fully when we do our work then what gets revealed is the essence of the dwelling place for hashem the saying is like this Hashem saw in his thought, 
and this vision that we're going to do Torah Mitzvah, and if he had Chafetz Chesed. But guess what? That's only thought. Once Hashem created the world, and He put us in this world, and He gave us a Torah, and we do the work, then it comes down from a much deeper place in a reality. And this is the idea, Derek says, this is the idea, the completion of the world, what's going to be the like Mashiach comes in the future. Because it says, in reference to the future, it says, Eila Toldois Peretz. This is the offspring of Peretz. So Toldois can be spelled with, with a vav or without a vav, and it says with a vav, which means it's going to be a full, full world. And But nevertheless, even though it's full, it's going to be higher than the completion that Hashem originally created the world. Like we know in the beginning of the world, it says, Eila Toldois Hashemayim Varts Bibarom. This is the offspring of, of the heaven and the earth when Hashem created it. So Vedir also says told us. So when Hashem created the world, it says told us with above. In the future, it also says with above. But nevertheless, <coughs> the future one is much greater. Because even though when Hashem created the world, it was created complete. But the com- completion of the world, the way it came from creation, Ela told us when he created it, it's finite. It's limited. The world Hashem created is still finite. Why? Because since the, 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 the essence of the world is finite, so therefore the completion is also finite. And even though that the creation came from Chafetz Chesed, which and we know Hashem is infinite, but the fact is the Chafetz Chesed was the cause of the creation. But the creation itself came down in a level from higher to lower. However, the ultimate, ultimate completion, when it's going to be like a Mashiach comes, and since that's going to come through after our work, and therefore we're able to draw in, reveal the essential pleasure of the essence of Hashem, and over there there's no limits, so therefore the completion of the world in the future is going to be without any limits. Like it has, Ela told these parrots. Parrots comes from the word is of the, exver- of the verse, Ma parats alecha parrots. You're able to go ahead and break through any boundaries. It means you're literally able to break through any limitations on any concealments of the world. And this completion that happens through our doing our work, when did it start? It all started on the sixth day of creation when Hashem created mankind. And man started to work the earth. Um, the beginning, the earth, literally in the, in the, in the person himself, like it says, Hashem got, went ahead and created um, it, it took from the, the man that he created, and then um, uh, so he worked with the man himself, and then afterwards with the earth outside the human being, which means all the levels of the world, the worlds, because we know everything was originally created from earth. And in other words, he, he affected in the creation in the whole world that let's all go ahead and prostrate and, and acknowledge and bless Hashem. So that started when in the first day, of, uh, sixth day of creation, and especially after the sixth day. Of Matan Torah, because the Torah was given on the sixth day of the month, and then you have the completion of the sixth day of creation, that the work of the human being and the effect in the world, um, which ha- which ha- which happens after Matan Torah is much higher, and especially on Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of creation. You know, it's like the beginning of creation, which happened through what mankind did on the first Rosh Hashanah, and even higher than that, and Rosh Hashanah itself every single year. It goes to, it goes to, goes to a, a higher level. Like we know it says, Ma'ilam HaKodesh, a person has to always grow in Judaism. Up to the point that in every Rosh Hashanah, the, a new light comes into the world that did not shine in the world till now. Up to we have the ultimate redemption. That it says, Ya'allah HaPoyritz L'Fenenu, we're going to have, we're going to break all boundaries, and we're going to break all the limitations, and we're going to have the greatest, most powerful blessings. Now, these three ideas that come down Rosh the first thing we said is, Tchilas Masecha, which means that our R is Rosh Hashanah, Zikaran Li'an Rishon, in remembrance of the first day, which means revealing Chafetz Chesed of the beginning of creation. And the third is revealing the, the in, internal pleasure which is higher than the Chafetz Chesed of creation, um, is connected to the three ideas of Rosh Hashanah, which is Malchiot, of kingdom, Zechreinot, remembrance, and Shofrot. And the Rebbe explains as follows. What we know, the idea, what's Malchus? What's kingdom? Kingdom is referring to the way God is fulfill, fills in this world, which is called Mimali Kalalman. Like it's explained at length in the Chesedic Discourse that we mentioned before from the Tzemach Tzedek. 
What does that mean? It's referring to a light which has a, a relation and a connection to the world, and a light that the Sarusal Tata, our effort, can reach. And that's why it says, Malchios, what's the idea of Malchios? So we want Hashem to be king over us. And just like a king down a, a kingdom down here, it happens through the nation. Like it says clearly, the Torah says, Soin Tosamalakamelach. The people have to put a king upon themselves. The same thing also when dealing with the kingdom in heaven, that this that Hashem becomes a king over us. What does that mean? The Jewish people accept Hashem to be a king. And we ask, And knows this request and this acceptance is part of the request that Hashem should give us decrees and we should accept upon Himself to do the mitzvahs, so to, to fulfill what Hashem is commanding us. And we do it, we accept. And like the, the expression is, like in every mitzvah, we say, Hashem sanctified us, yes, with His commandments. It's Yivon who He instructed us. In other words, why are we doing the mitzvah? Because Hashem commanded us to do this. Hashem decreed upon us to do it. And through that, Hashem becomes literally the king over, over the Jewish people. And through that, not only on the Jewish people, but on the whole world. And through the fact that we do our work, we awaken the idea of kingdom. What, how, how does that happen? Because what is kingdom? Kingdom, we said before, is the idea of Oyer HaMali, the part of Hashem that fills the world. And that's something which our avoider can reach. Yusuf Lotata reaches there. And like, for example, that, that's the whole idea of Tchilas Masacha. Now, even though Rosh everything goes back to its original state, and Hashem becomes a king, not for us from what we call it, but it's constantly the essence of the infinite part of Hashem, which is much higher than Malchus. But and this the fact that we are able to reach that level because we are connected to the essence of Hashem, of, 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 of Hashem. and like he explains in Kotel Torah, this that the, the Jewish people are able to reveal that God should be the king is because Hashem made a bond with us and with one with Hashem. But the fact is, this that with our source is in the essence of Hashem. That's correct. But the, the, the actual drawing down where Hashem chooses to be a king, that's connected more to the light of Mimali Kalam. Again, so what do we see? The first idea is Malchus is connected. The Malchus is the idea of what? Of Mimali Kalam. So, and that's connected to Tchilas Masecha. The second idea is Zichroinus. What do we do in Rosh Hashanah? We, we, have, we, 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 we talk about the different memories, different mentionings. What is that referring to? That's what we're referring to the infinite part of Hashem, which is Soiviv Kalam. The one part of the Hashem is too, pow- too powerful to be internalized, but it happens over the world, which Hashem, is, so to speak, is holier and disconnected from the world. Because what's the idea of Zikroin? How can you remember something? Something that you have, you can't remember it, you have it. So the current, you're remembering something, something that's far away, whether it's in physical space or in, in, on a level, up to the point where you can't, you can't, can't grasp it. And that's the idea of zichroinois, which is referring to the essence of the infant part of Hashem, which basically the whole world is nothing to him. Or like, for example, like zikaroin that we said, the Yom Rishon to the first day. But nevertheless, even though it's so powerful, but nevertheless, zikaroin does have a connection to something that exists. Because you're remembering it. But nevertheless, fine, it's very far away. And that's why Zechroinus is connected to the idea of Soive. Because Soive means there's a world, but it hovers over it, but there is a connection. Okay, so that's the second idea. So the second idea is what? Zechroinus, which is connected to Soive of Klam. And the third idea, Shoifroys, is like it's explained in the, in the Hasidic discourse of the Tzemach Tzedek, that the sound of the Shoifr, what is the sound of the Shoifr? The Tzemach Tzedek explains it's a color prima, it's an internal voice which comes from the internal part of the heart. So what do you see from here? That when you draw down through Shoifer, it's coming from the internal part and the essence of the infinite part of Hashem, which is higher than Soivev. So we had Mamale, Soivev, now it's even higher and deeper. And that's why it says, L'cham alibi, bakshu panai, es panecha Hashem abakesh, that we discussed at length in the previous discourse of, of uh, David Hashem Hayri, that when a person is bakshu panai, which means when you call out from the internal part of your heart, so you reach panecha Hashem avakesh, you reach the essence of Hashem. And as you come to the internal part of the, the essence of the infinite part of Hashem, and it's like the drawing in and the revelation of the internal a pleasure, which is higher than chafetz chesed. 
And especially, like it's known that shoifer comes from um, uh, beautifying your actions, which comes from the idea of tainug, a deep sense of pleasure. And the pleasure of the shoifer is the source of all the pleasures up until um, the pleasure of Hashem in himself. So what he's saying is like this. These three ideas of tchilas masecha, um, zikarin liyom rishon, and the internal part is connected to what? To Malchios, Zichronios, and Shaifios. Malchios is Malaklamim, connected to Chilz Masecha. Zichronios is Soivev, connected to Zichronios, Mishroin. And Shaifios is connected to the essence and the internal part of Hashem. Now, these three ideas, Mimale, Soivev, and the Atzmas are in Soiv. Mimale, the part that fills the world. Soivev hovers over in the essence of the infinite part of Hashem. So we have, so to speak, in human being as well. Why? Because we know that human being is Damal we com- we're, we're compared to Hashem. So therefore, we all have these three components within us. Where do we have these three components within us? So the internal powers that we have, that's revealed in a body, so that is like the light that fill, fill, fills the world. That basically, it, 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 it gets enclosed and it, it, gets, it has an impact in a revealed one. That's the first part. The um, that we have, like for example, the power of rotsa and will, which of, which impacts all all, all 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 our powers, but it's not revealed. That's like the era So and and that 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 affects in a concealed way. And then you have the essence of the soul, which is higher than the koychas makifim. That's compared to the atzmasar insight. So what do you see from here? That the spiritual work of malchiot zichronot are referring to on the internal, Malchus is the internal, and Zechroni is the external powers of the soul, and the avoid of the Shreifer is, is the essence of the soul. And like we said before, that the sound of the Shreifer is the internal sound which is not even heard. Now, even though that the sound of the Shreifer, so on one hand we're saying the sound of the Shreifer is an internal part sound, it's the essence of our heart, so it's very, very spiritual. So you think, wow, but nevertheless, the blowing has to be a physical shoifer and a shoifer of an animal, a, a, a living be, a, a being which is actually lower than the level of Madaber. Like he explains in that, in that Hasidic discourse of the Samak Tzedek. And not only that, the, the, the shoifer has to be disconnected from, from the animal. It has to become a doimim. So it started with a chai, but it comes a doimim. So what do you see? That even in the most powerful spiritual levels, the internal part of the, of the heart, which is the avoid of the shoifer, and it's coming from the internal part of the essence of the soul. No, but it has to affect into the doimim, the most inanimate places. And through that, only through that, it awakens the, 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 the most powerful internal call of the heart. And like we know, in reference to doimim, soimeya chai madabra, the four different levels of energy, doimim the lowest, soimeya things that grow chai, chai more, and then madabra even more, that in, in, in human beings, that the, that the doimim, the most lowest part, is connected to the highest part, the madabra. And the same thing also, the, the, the part that hovers over the person, which is higher than all the levels of doimim, soimeya chai madabra, in which makif is we connect the idea of soivev, and the same thing also in the essence of the soul, which is higher than that level, that the way you waken it up is specifically through the diamond. So therefore, even though, again, you're connecting to the essence of your soul, how do you wake it up with diamond? So therefore, you have to literally blow a physical shoifer. Why? Because to reveal the internal voice of the internal part of your heart um, doesn't come from the rut in the highest level, and on the contrary, and, and how much more so it doesn't come from the level of Chachman bin Adas, or from your emotions, but specifically from Doim and the inanimate. Which, what does that mean practically? That's the avoid of Kabbalah soil, accepting. Basically, the most, sim- the most inanimate part, the most physical, the most the lack of, again, no Ratzai, no will, and no intellect, no emotions, just accepting. Like we know, in reference to the idea of the lower level of awe, that specifically through the lower level of law, that's how you reveal the highest level of all. And even lower than that, in action, which is connected to doimim, the physical uh, uh, part of the human being, and you literally blow a physical shoifer, up to the point that blowing the shoifer in action, that's the only mitzvah. And that's the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah. Like we know, what's the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah? To blow the shoifer. And from this we'll understand the teaching of the previous Rebbe. In the name of the Alter Rebbe, in reference to Rosh Hashanah, he says, we do not understand, we have no comprehension how precious it is by Hashem, the physical body of the human being. And it doesn't mean that, <coughs> that 
that also the body is, is pressured by Hashem. No, no, no. But the main beauty and the main power and the main specialness is specifically in the physical body. And that's why he says we don't have any comprehension in it. Why? Because the fact is the preciousness of the body is much higher than the understanding and comprehension because the body, the doimim, comes and is connected to the essence of Hashem. And the Rebbe says he'd like to add that since HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted and his whole dream and his whole desire was to make a dwelling place in Tachtoinim, a place where God is concealed, that means even the, that means even the physical materialistic world that's outside the person should be a dwelling place for Hashem. So therefore, it's not enough that the, in, the voice that's coming from the internal part of your heart gets revealed through doimim, which means accepting an action of the person. But you, we need to create that this revelation should be, you know, this powerful revelation of the internal part of your heart, it should be through specifically a, a shoifer from an animal, and specifically the way it's disconnected from its source, doimim, and that will affect in the in, 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 in the world and in the, in the most materialistic part to make the most lowest part of the world a dwelling place for Hashem. Um, compared to just like it was in Rosh Hashanah the first time, that the first man, he went ahead, he affected in the creation of the world that has nothing to do with him outside himself. And he came to all of them and he said, let's go ahead and prostrate ourselves and let's acknowledge and let's bless Hashem, the one that made us. Now this idea of shoifer, which means blowing shoifer with a materialistic shoifer, an animal, and the way it becomes a diamond, it's disconnected from its source. It's from the expression of shafar masechen to beautify our actions, which comes from the idea spiritually of, of the internal part of pleasure. Because through that, that's how we fulfill the ultimate dream that Hashem wanted to make a dwelling place down here. And the same thing also literally. The idea that creates a pleasure on high from the fact that we do Hashem's mitzvahs. And this pleasure is the internal pleasure Hashem has which is higher than we said Chafetz Chesed. Where, where does Hashem get pleasure? When we do a physical mis, mitzvah with a, literally a, a, a shoifer from an animal, and that causes Hashem to say, no, you did my mitzvah. Now the fact is, this pleasure and this enjoyment that Hashem has, that, we, that, that we're doing His mitzvahs, it's a whole year. But the fact is like this. On Rosh Hashanah, the, the, the main mitzvah of the day is and the, the powerful idea of Hashan is, is based on our work and our pleasure, and that affects the whole year. In other words, when the Jewish people, we add in our work, and especially, therefore, we add in the, in the pleasure um, of Hashem a whole year, so that creates in the pleasure that Hashem has um, when we do His work on Rosh Hashanah. And since, the Rebbe says, every one of us um, did for sure in the previous year, everything you're supposed to. Because why? Well, how do you know? Because the, the, the rule is, call Yisrael B'chesk Kashrus. We assume everyone is kosher. And it's a, it's a chazaka. It's an established fact. And the Torah says it's an established fact. And especially that we're after the, the, the spiritual work of the month of Elul. And in Elul itself, we're after the 18th day of the month of Elul. And we know the 18th is comes from Chai, which means it gives life and energy into the month of Elul. Um, Besides the fact that Eden Valley Lerber says it's it's the most pow- it's a very, very powerful day because two powerful lights were created on that day, the Balshemtov and the Alta Rebbe. And uh, then that day we have the established ruling that every single person is doing what he's supposed to off the charts. And every single day, from from, from the 18th day of El and on, the the, the 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 kosher part and the purity of every single Jewish person is we we're, we're constantly adding light, and especially in the days of Slichot. So it's sure. That we're at tem nitzavim hayoyim kolcham. We're all standing here today, like it says in the in the in the Torah portion that we read in the previous Torah portion before the Rebbe said this chesed discourse, and and all the days get blessed from that day, and like the teaching of the Rosh of that hayoyim at tem is referring to the day of Rosh It's a day of judgment, and every one of us, every one of us standing, and we're we're meritorious in the judgment, and this idea that we're all meritorious it happens already before Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, but how do we know? Because in Rosh Hashanah, we really start wearing white garments, and we wrap ourselves in white garments, and we go with joy, and with great joy, the Rebbe says, to crown the king of Rosh Hashanah. Because in Erev Rosh Hashanah, we have all the preparations already of Simcha, joy, that breaks through all the boundaries. And that creates a proper preparation. It's going to come and break through all the boundaries very, very soon. That we're going to have and never finish up beautifully. 
Exiva v'chasima toiva. We're going to be written and sealed for good. L'shana toiva masuka. A good year, a sweet year. And um, it's going to be included that this is going to be the year of redemption. We're going to have the true redemption, the complete redemption through Mashiach Tzitkenu. Yalla how pirates is going to come and break open the, all the borders of Gullus. And it's going to happen Bimheira v'yameinu mamash very, very soon, very, very quickly in our times. So here we have another beautiful, powerful discourse in the Rebbe about Rosh Hashanah, the three different levels, Tchilas Masecha, Yoim Rishon, and then even the essence of Hashem, and which applies in Hashem, applies in each and every one of us. But like the Rebbe finishes off, even after all, setting on the deepest levels, the premiums of our, our heart, but the goal is we need physical mitzvahs, physical blowing the shofar, and that will give us the 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 that God will reveal on the on on every single level. And like Gabriel says, he'll break open the boundaries of Gullus, and we'll have a great and a beautiful year. So I want to wish you all a ksiva vachsima toiva, which we written and sealed in a good year. We should have a sweet year, and we should have, like Gabriel says, the ultimate um, revelation, the true revelation, the complete revelation. And God willing, our next class will be in Yerushalayim, Irakoidish. Have a great and blessed week. Shana toiva umasuka.